Hi everyone, a very good evening and welcome to yet another Edelweiss Connect Classroom session. It is our pleasure to, to have you all here and as usual, we use these platforms and sessions to help you decode, decipher, enhance your understanding of investments and help you in your journey of investments. Today, uh, the topic that we have chosen is called decoding and simplifying equity investment styles. Every fund manager, every active mutual fund scheme follows a certain style of investing. You could call it bias, call it preference, call it investment uh, philosophy, ideology, whatever you want to. But every fund manager uh, follows a certain style. And we as maybe existing investors, prospective investors into mutual fund schemes, which is managed by this fund management team, it, I think it becomes very, very important for us that we have an understanding of what is their preferred style. And then uh, check if that style actually fits into my own investment idea or philosophy, right? And hence, through this program, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you the various active equity investment styles and then in turn help in enhancing your own understanding of these various styles and then, you know, make you, uh, you know, take a better informed decisions uh, in choosing the styles which best suit your investment journey. It may not be necessary for us to choose just one single style, right? It could be a combination and hence, uh, and you or you could even perhaps keep switching depending on what uh, is the current market information that you're reading, or how are you uh, decoding the current market situation and basis that understanding, you could even switch between these styles. But I think the primary, primary thing should be to understand and have a better better idea on these styles. So what are these styles? There are predominantly six styles that I'm going to talk to you about. We'll talk about what is the market capitalization method of investing. We'll talk about what is the growth method of investing, the value way of investing, what is the momentum way of investing? Uh, what I mean, what is it that that, you know, how can you invest or what is it, how quality gets chosen? Uh, how can you take benefits of the volatile and volatility in the markets? And is there a volatility way of investing? And contrary, there are these seven styles. And I'm going to talk to you about all of these, uh, you know, and as usual, if you have any queries and questions with regards to what we are discussing today, you could put it in the chat. I will respond to each one of those towards the end. Okay, so on that note, uh, you know, uh, let us begin. Uh, but before I begin, I also want to share is it's not necessary that, you know, any fund manager or fund management team is just following one. It, you, I mean, in any scheme, there could also be a combination. So for example, you could use market capitalization and quality. You could use growth and value together in, in creating a portfolio mix. Uh, so it's not necessary. that You're only looking at one. Uh, right. So in that sense, you know, uh, they, I mean, a fund management team could be looking at a combination of these styles to create their portfolios. Let's start with the first one, which is market capitalization, right? This is the most common uh, and uh, most uh, most traditional way of investing. I mean, we have broadly three types of market capitalizations available, large cap, mid cap, and small cap. Uh, in terms of understanding your top 100 companies as per market capitalization are called large cap companies. Your 100 to 250 companies are known as your mid cap companies and companies beyond 251, from 251 and beyond are known as small cap companies in terms of how they are capitalized. Okay, this is a very, very simple way of understanding what these are. Now, obviously, I mean, when you, when you dig deeper, large cap companies have a lot more stability in comparison to the mid cap and the small cap companies. They also have some kind of dividend history, so they are more profitable or have a profitable have a profitable have a profitable history to show so that's why that's why large cap stands mid caps uh, have stability 
have have some dividend history have profits but uh, they are also so in terms of return uh, over a long period of time they 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 exhibited to show better returns in comparison to large caps uh, in terms of volatility they are a little more volatile in comparison to large caps but little le uh, far less volatile in comparison to small caps Right. Small caps are, are a little more riskier in terms of your investment decisions in comparison to your large cap and mid caps. Uh, while returns in small caps have, have a, over a long period of time exhibited or shown that they are a little higher, uh, the volatility in small caps is also something which is higher. Right. So this is something which we all need to understand. So so this is and I mean, and then obviously there's a combination of all of these three known as multi cap also, uh, where a fund manager invests across these market capitalizations, uh, you know, and uh, that's how market capitalization method has, has perhaps been the most common, most preferred from investors to start with in terms of calculating market capitalization there is there is a method called free float methodology uh, where basically what you do is you look at uh, you know the equity prices and multiply it with the number of shares readily available for trade in the market so what it does it excludes promoter shares it excludes uh, you know locked in shares preference shares uh, you know and all of these shares primarily because these shares are something which is not traded so free float methodolo methodology is a more apt or accurate way in understanding the market capitalization of any company okay the next uh the next style is the growth style right a growth company is any company which is generating significant cash flows or earnings which increases at a at a at a rate which is usually faster than the overall economy. So if the economy is growing at about six percent, seven percent, companies which are growing at a rate which is greater than this six and seven percent are known as your growth companies, right? Now, usually a lot of people think growth companies are also uh, dividend paying companies, but actually they may not be. Growth companies are those companies which which want to reinvest in their business. Uh, you know, uh, they, these companies identify that they can generate more profit, they can generate faster growth or more growth by reinvesting into their business. And therefore, they usually do not prefer to pay dividend or share their profits with their investors in way of dividend. They usually want to reinvest back Mature companies are usually the ones which pay dividends, right? Mature companies are, are companies which are usually which have usually reached a certain growth rate. They are happy with that growth rate. They think that you know reaching a higher growth rate may be a little tough or challenging. And hence, prob probably they do not want to reinvest too much back in the business. So what they do, they usually pay back and you know, uh, they pay back the profits in, in way of dividend to their investors. Growth companies want to invest back because they see opportunity, they want to grow, uh, they think that they can grow faster, they can grow better, and hence they want to invest back, right? Similarly, there is something known as value companies. Now, value companies are usually those companies uh, which are established companies, but they're trading below the price that any analyst or fund manager thinks that the stock is worth. So let me give you an example over here. Let's say you are looking at a company X whose book value comes at rupees 25 rupees, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, it is trading at a, at a price of 20 rupees. Now, obviously, if it is 25 rupees and 20 rupees, now this becomes something which any analyst or fund manager would think that, you know, if I if I'll invest in this stock, this is a value buy because if the book value is higher, the, this price will go back and reach that level, right? Uh, so, so in that sense, uh, you know, this, this becomes a value play or a value buy. But what is very important when you're looking at value is to ascertain the exact reason for this underpricing. Now, is it, is it, you know, uh, genuinely undervalued or it is, it is, it is being undervalued because of a certain issue. 
Now, what is this issue? Then that becomes very, very important to find, find out, right? Is it a government's governance issue? Is it a competition uh, getting out with better products? Is it, is it that the government is now changing some policy because which may impact this organization? And if these are the issues, then obviously then, uh, you know, you may, you may not want to get into this thinking as a value buy just because it is, it is underpriced. If we do not understand and determine these issues accurately, very honestly, you know, it, the call could go wrong, and hence, uh, you know, uh, hence you may you may be stuck with that with that security for a little longer, or you may also have to have to incur certain losses. So that's that's where value also becomes important in terms of understanding of whether what's the what's the reason for 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 this for this price being lower than whatever is expected right um, in a nutshell if i were to if i were to just differentiate between value and growth value as i said is are usually underpriced uh, or undervalued uh, you know prices are lower than the broader markets growth stocks are overvalued so, and hence as it's undervalued the the uh, the price to equity is usually lower uh, in terms of uh, you know value stocks and they have and growth stocks show a higher higher earning and higher earning rate you know, price to earning is little is lower in uh, in in value and in growth it's higher uh, in terms of risk uh, value stocks usually uh, are are a little less volatile because uh, it's 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 underpriced it's it's somewhere you know uh, not attracting a lot of attention and hence they, they it also has lower volatility growth stocks can have higher volatility in comparison to value uh, dividend in terms of dividends uh, like i said growth stocks usually do not pay a lot of dividends so it has a very low dividend yield value stocks could be having uh, a higher dividend yield in, in in similar comparison now we at edelweiss you know very smartly play both of these growth and value. Uh, we do not, we do not, uh, you know, gravitate towards any one that we want to invest in either growth or we want to invest only in value. Our portfolios usually are constructed with a combination of growth and value. So if we see opportunities in growth stocks, we, we, we look at that. If we see opportunities in value stocks, we look at that. Just giving you a perspective of how we manage uh, both these. I mean, the reason why I'm elaborating a little more on these is because uh, after market capitalization, I think growth and value are perhaps the most spoken about uh, in terms of the investment style and hence you know enhancing our own understanding on what is the and what is the play that you are getting into is something which becomes very very important for all of us as investors so that's growth and value another another uh, style uh, which recently has 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 been a lot in the news or has 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 has, has gained certain momentum is the momentum style of investing uh, right it is it is a, it is a it is a style in which you aim to capitalize on a market trend so you you identify securities which is moving up uh, you know you have technical data suggesting that this is going to continue and it's sort of momentum where it will keep on moving up and you invest in those right uh, so these stocks uh, or these securities uh, you know uh, you you identify and you and you invest and you 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 identify a peak also when you want to get out of them right and uh, you know uh, it is it is something which which has which has like i said got a, got a lot of interest in the recent past uh, and uh, you know something where where you're where where we as an industry are also seeing uh, a lot more conversations around uh, right but what is also important to understand is you know when it comes to momentum uh, any fund management team follows certain certain rules very strictly based on either technical indicators uh, based on these technical indicators that dictate their entry and exit points very very clearly right uh, they do not i mean over here then you you are not too focused on the fundamentals of the organization or you know how the or what are the value indicators uh, you know telling you primarily because you want to ride the momentum wave right it's like you know you are you are betting on a horse which has been consistently performing so the probability that the horse will win becomes higher or you are getting onto a horse which you know is is, is faster than the uh, is, is running faster than the others right so in that sense you know uh, your 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 you want to 
you want to get on to the winning side of things or you want to bet on the on its winning streak but there is data suggesting it so it's not it's not just a pure pure bet there is a lot of technical analysis which gets into it there are there is a lot of charts which get studied and this is uh, you know the the norms and the rules that you have set uh, those securities which fall into these uh, and you see momentum picking up over there are those securities which the fund management team invests into and rides the wave so that's how a momentum based uh, strategy uh, or momentum based style actually it's 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 more like a style uh, you know uh, that gets adopted in the markets then next is quality we all i mean quality is something which we all talk about and we all, we all get very interested into right but quality is an investment strategy which clearly ident or investment style my uh, you know which clearly identifies how what is that outstanding quality which is separating this this particular organization or company from its competition it could be based on softer aspects uh, like management credibility or harder aspects like uh, you know uh, your balance sheet uh, you know uh, we look at uh, we look at a lot of fact we look at some factors in terms of how quality can is is it's looked at in in subsequent slides uh, but uh, you know what is important over here is to understand quality usually means that you are investing in the best in class usually your you know your large and established companies are the ones which 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 are which are called out for its quality right what is also important to to know where is usually according to statistics uh, you know uh, the that that extra quality or that outstanding quality that characteristic that you're seeing uh, remains with the company for about a, a period of 11 months on an average right so which what it means is that whatever qualitative and quantitative you know monitoring that you're doing of the organization needs to be done uh, you know very very systematically and frequently it's not as if if I have this competitive edge, it's going to stay with me forever, right? If in the market thinks that this is how you know things are, are moving forward, they will also evolve, they will also adapt, right? So that is why what is what is seen uh, is that about eleven months time, you know, you you could lose your competitive edge, or others will catch up, and hence you know you will have to keep on reevaluating your criteria. Now, what are those factors in quality that that people uh, you know uh, look at? One is market positioning. You know, uh, you know how are you distinguishing yourself from its peers and creating your uh, leading market position? That's one. That's one factor. Another one is business model. You know, how established is your business model? What is the competitive edge that you're getting in your in your business model? And you know, how how well established you are in terms of your geographical span or your value chain, or what is it that is in your business model, which is you know separating you from your competition at the same time showing uh, you know what high quality you're delivering. The third is corporate governance, transparency, organized, you know, professional management with low turnover ratio are clearly factors which define high quality in terms of corporate governance. So how do you compare this? You look at, uh, you know, all the organizations in a particular sector, uh, you know, those organizations which are, which are, you know, right on top ranking will become, uh, you know, high on corporate governance when, when you look at these factors. And that is why that becomes a high uh, or a star quality for organizations similarly like i said financial strength you know how stable is your cash flows how strong is your balance sheet you know uh, you know how how quickly can you generate enough cash flows uh, you know are uh, if is your operating cash flow exceeding net income uh, you know these are some things through which you deliver financial strength and obviously if if your if if your if your financial strength is is stronger than your peer set you are obviously doing better and that can become also a quality indicator last is obviously attractive valuation uh, you know valuation ultimately is related to quality and uh, you know you you calculate attractive valuation by seeing if it's a high discounted cash flow or low p ratio of how of this organization in comparison to its peer set and that's how you define uh, you know a quality organization uh, in any any particular peer set
So these are those five factors uh, through which you a certain quality of an organization in comparison to its peer set. Okay, moving on to another style is volatility. Now volatility, uh, you know, usually as investors, we all prefer to invest in low volatile investments, right? Even when we are looking at, uh, you know, investing on the equity side, we, we do not, we do not uh, relish volatility to a great extent. But what is what is also seen uh, is that there are there are opportunities in in high volatile markets which are available, uh, you know, uh, to take advantage of. So, uh, you know, so for example, high volatility investing is typically what hedge fund managers do, uh, right? They invest in high volatile assets and they hedge their bets, uh, depending on going long or short, to create significant returns in the end. So it's not as if, you know, only low volatility works, even high volatility environment creates advantage and opportunities for investors. So, so depending on how volatile the markets are, you can also choose to either be in a low volatile or a high volatile investment style. Uh, you know, predominantly, like I said, most of us as investors prefer to be in low volatility, primarily because you know it's not something which augurs well with most of us as in, as as investors, and it's perfectly fine. Uh, not saying that you should do this, but. All that I'm saying is that this is also a style and high volatility also presents opportunities, which there are certain fund management teams, fund management analysts, uh, you know, fund analysts or, or certain schemes which take benefit of that high volatility to create certain returns for its investors. So that's also available. Right. And the last style that I want to talk to you about is this contrarian style, right? I mean, uh, this is something which I'm sure a lot of us perhaps have read about, you know, it's about going against the market tide. So a uh, simple way of, of saying this is buy when others are selling, sell when others are buying. Very honestly, it's a very, very difficult thing to do, right? I mean, when you're going against the tide and when and everyone is saying we should buy, 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 there's a lot of noise around it, maybe, uh, you know, and you, you're thinking of selling. It's very difficult. But what this also does is you're bucking the trend, you're, you're breaking your biases, you're, you know, of, of, of following everyone uh, of and, and joining, joining the bus, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, you are, you're doing your own thing. Uh, but yes, this requires a lot of discipline. Uh, you know, and it requires a lot of patience. It requires a lot of resistance from you to cut the noise from the market, uh, you know, to adopt and adapt a contrarian investment style. Uh, you know, it, it works for a lot of people, uh, you know, who, who have the discipline to do it, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, but what is also important to remember is a lot of times, you know, contrarian investment managers, uh, you know, get early on the on the opposite side of the trend. So there, if there was an opportunity which was available, they perhaps are not gauging it uh, or timing it correctly. That's that's a practical challenge for a contrarian contrarian style of investment too, uh, right? So being contrarian can be rewarding, but is often often also called as a risky strategy because it may it may take a long time for your strategy to pay off. So in that sense, uh, you know, it you you need a lot more patience. You need a lot more discipline to be a contrarian investment, uh, you know, a manager. But yes, it's it's paid off for a lot of people who who have been in the markets. It is not something which doesn't pay off. It requires a lot more patience. That's all that is there in the contrarian style. Right. So these are the seven styles. So we spoke about market capitalization. We spoke about growth, value, momentum. We spoke about volatility. We spoke about quality. We spoke about the contrarian style. And like I said, there are schemes uh, which, which adapt and adopt, you know, more than one. So you could have a large cap. Uh, focused on quality, you could have a mid cap focused on quality, you could have a combination in growth or value, like I said, you could have, uh, you know, uh, momentum with growth, uh, for example, you know, that can also be uh, a style uh, amalgamation uh, in terms of investments. So there could be, a, there could be a combination of these also, uh, which is being put into action to create a portfolio. 
becomes very very important for us to understand this i mean you could under, i mean how do you understand this very honestly uh, if you have a financial distributing partner or an advisor you know they would be someone who will tell you about this uh, you know if 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 you are a diy uh, it may be a little challenging because this information is something which you would have to you know talk uh, you know internally to 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 the organization to have an understanding of you know what's the strategy and you know you'll have to look at the keywords being used in order to have an understanding of what is it what is it the style of the style that is being adapted and adopted in a particular scheme so so that's that's something which which is which is something which we will all need to do uh, you know, so this is what i had uh, for all of us anyone with any queries or questions i'll be more than happy to take them uh, and respond to your queries and questions okay so i already have a question is edelweiss small cap fund investing our, our funds in growth or value like i said we adapt a, a, a style which is a combination of growth and value so in that sense uh, we do not we do not uh, look at only one uh, that we only want to do it we only want to invest in growth companies or we only want to invest in value uh, we look at opportunities across growth companies opportunities across value companies evaluate both uh, without having any strong bias towards anyone so we look at a combination of both i hope that answers your question sir or madam is volatility style close to momentum style so uh, so momentum basically is riding the wave right so when a stock starts doing well and you're seeing this uh, you know uh, when you see this when you see the security moving up and you know you look at technical charts saying that it has a it is a peak it has a peak which is still far off and it is moving faster let's say than what the markets are moving or and you know it is something which is which is doing better uh and you invest in in that so in that sense it is not the same as volatility volatility would be something where you are looking at if you're looking at high volatility you're looking at uh you know creating a hedge uh between the buy and sell uh and and basis that taking advantage of the volatility in the script uh if you if you think that the prices will go up uh you know you would want to buy today to to you know take advantage of that price if you think that the price will price will go down you would want to sell today to take benefit of you know ensuring that you you're covering on your downside that's how a hedge fund manager usually works and that high volatility or high momentum in price would there work so it's a little different in terms of momentum and uh, volatility okay the third question that i'm getting is contrary uh, again contrarian style seems like value uh, so contrarian is taking a contrary view uh, in the market right uh, so what I, what it means is you know uh, if if everyone is saying that this is an opportunity to buy and there is there is there is a herd moving towards buying uh you think you adapt a contrarian style and say that no i think that this is this is something where i want to sell similarly when others are selling you see opportunities in buying uh that this price is now correcting i'm getting this at this price i want to enter this security at this price so contrarian is is that style of investing like what like i said you're riding a wave which is which is different uh from what the market is talking at that point in time and hence it requires a lot of discipline it requires a lot of patience it requires you to break your break the herd it requires you to uh to stay uh stay in the opposite side so that's why it's a little challenging that's that's what contrarian is i hope that helps so quality volatility and value styles are limited in in large cap so not not really so volatility is across so small cap has is a little more volatile uh, right uh, value can be can be something which can be derived in mid cap also uh, you know in that sense and quality is something which i think uh, you would associate more with larger players so in that sense you know they are they are all different styles and not only restricted to nifty 100 okay any other questions 
there's a question which is which is asking what are the good funds to invest now in present market i think uh, there is no one size fits all uh, you know there has to be a more customized approach understanding your requirements your goal your risk appetite and this is your investment horizon and only pieces that uh, you know come to an investment uh, uh, suggestion so very honestly i would not want to recommend just one scheme because i think that's not the way investments should be done is momentum investment for short term investment no really because uh, you know uh, there are always opportunities even in moment in the momentum basket uh, and, and 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 you know the fund management team uh, will keep on looking at these opportunities and keeping on you know moving their portfolios accordingly so it's not only a short term uh, investment idea no In fact, it's, it's a lot of passive funds have 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 joined have created momentum uh, index indices and, and using that. So it's definitely not a short term idea. Can we recommend momentum style to investors? Of course, you can. Yes, there are. Like I said, there are also a lot of passive schemes on the in uh, you know uh, tracking momentum. Uh, so in that sense, momentum is something which can go to all investors. Any other queries, questions? Okay, I think. Uh, these were the questions and uh, genuinely appreciate all your queries and questions. I hope I've been able to respond to each one of them satisfactorily. satisfactorily. And uh, this session has helped all of us to enhance our understanding on the various styles which are getting adopted or adapted uh, for investments. And this is this session. I hope we are able to become a better judge of uh, you know what are those styles which which fit into my investment journey, and uh, you know take this take investment decisions by being a little more better informed on these. On that note, I'll we'll end our session today. Thank you very much for your time, and as usual, we'll connect once again in the coming month with another session. Till then, do take care of yourself. See you. Bye bye. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.